I have a wound. I thought it best to mention this up front, as some of you, all of you possibly, may notice me perhaps holding myself in an awkward position, or perhaps hovering my hand above the position of the wound. Here. And you will no doubt suspect, or perhaps some eyes would be a more appropriate word, that I'm in possession of a wound, and inevitably you will jump to the conclusion that I'm trying to conceal it from you, which is far from the truth. Far, far from the truth, for indeed I have no problem showing you my wound, if that's your wish. I hesitate to use the word desire, but I do assure you that this wound has nothing to do with these proceedings. Is that what these are? Proceedings. And I'd like to assure you further that the particular wound in question, this wound here, is now well over a week old and is neither leaking nor infected. Indeed, it hasn't needed a dressing or even a simple plaster for at least two days. Well, on reflection, however, I can now see, oh, I can see it all too clearly. It was a mistake to mention the wound, this wound here, because, while well, looking at you, it is obvious to me that most of you, if not all, would not be perceptive enough to notice me holding myself in any particular way, awkward or otherwise. And if I did inadvertently hover my hand above the wound here, as I say, and I found it hard to believe, impossible in fact, that a single one of you, not one, would surmise, deduce I am in possession of a wound, self-inflicted or otherwise. And if I could go back and start this whole procedure, is that what this is? A procedure? Over again? And then I would. And I would make no mention of the wound, this wound here, none whatsoever. And instead... Instead, well, I would start talking about something else. Like the weather, perhaps, or the reported discovery of a gigantic oarfish on some beach somewhere. <laughs> it was 33 feet long, the newscaster said, but people exaggerate. People lie. But now, now, having set the idea of the wound, this wound here, free, the word unleashed comes to mind, and I feel it like a, like a black crow in the room, yes, a black crow flapping and pecking, and I am all too aware that whatever I go on to mention, whether it be the unseasonable cold spell, or if, as some people believe, the discovery of that dead 33-foot oarfish is an omen of the apocalypse, well, I will be obliged, forced, to return to the subject of the wound, this wound here, over and over and over again, and so, well, I might as well tell you all about the wound now and get it out of the way in the hope, some may say vain hope, that some sanity Perhaps reason would be a better word. Can return to these, these proceedings. Is that what these are? Proceedings? And then we can all continue without reference to this particular wound, this one here, ever again. <laughs> About a week ago, I... No, let me be precise. I don't want you accusing me of vagueness, as you've done before, many, many times before. It was 12 days ago, a Friday, and I woke up that morning with one of my niggling headaches that, as you know, usually occur after I've been dreaming of some world atrocity. And so it was that morning, for I'd spent the past eight hours caught up in a napalm attack on a school. And on waking, I could still smell the napalm. Although... Of course, I've no idea what napalm actually smells like, though I've always imagined it to be a somewhat intoxicating mix of petrol and, and peppermint. And I could still feel the skin on my neck and my back burning and peeling away. Not that I've ever had the skin on my neck and my back burning and peeling away, but I have seen photographs of someone experiencing this abomination. And I'm able to put myself in this person's place. Indeed, I consider it compulsory, obligatory, humane to put myself in another person's place. For I've always believed, surely we all believe, even you, that this is what makes us human, you know. This ability to, to feel empathy for the suffering of our fellow human beings and to help stop that suffering by sending food parcels or a get well card or even, you know, if we have the talent create a wonderful work of art to comfort them. To comfort all. You no, know, like that ceiling covered in paintings. Oh, what's the one? Where is it? You know, the painted fucking ceiling, Rome. Michelangelo, you must know what I mean. The big finger about to touch the other finger. I mean, you don't see animals creating things like that, do you? You don't dig a badger out of its burrow and find the burrow covered with paintings of badgers about to touch the claws of other fucking badgers. Only humans do this. 
upon the human's gaze at stars and I've done it myself. I mean, you must have done it. We've all done it, you know, and seen shapes. The plow, the bear. And we stare. We wonder. An aspirin. That's what I needed. You know, my niggling headache that Friday morning. Remember? I thought I had a packet in the green bowl on top of my fridge, but when I looked, nothing. So I left my flat to get some. Now, normally I would have gone to the corner shop, but unfortunately it's still boarded up due to the fire that got to the premises several months ago. The fire had been caused, at least this is a gossip, and I'm not one for gossip now, I'm really not, but in the absence of any real facts, what else is there? But by water falling onto an electric fire in the living room. Luckily, I won't say miraculously, the shopkeeper and his wife and two children, a boy and a girl, both in their teens, they survived the blade. But a friend of the son who was staying the night, he unfortunately perished as he slept on the sofa in the living room and the living room is where the fire started. It's believed that the family cat, a tabby, a... Oh, what's his name? Mm, I forget now. Did I ever know it? Went into the living room that night and it... Ginger! I did know it. Ginger knocked over a vase of flowers and the water spilled onto the electric fire and whoosh! Inferno. Shall I tell you something to make your blood run cold? Huh? Do you want to shiver down your spine? Listen to this. The flowers had been a gift from the son's friend to the son's mother for letting him stay the night. Goosebumps? I have. Look. There's a chemist down the main road, so I decide to get the aspirin there. I take a shortcut down. Uh, what's the name of that street? <laughs> you know, actually, I, I don't think it has a name. Or if it did, which it must have done at some time, it hasn't now. There's no sign up. Well, there's nothing up, in fact. You know, they demolished all of the houses years ago. No one's built anything new. It's just corrugated iron fencing on either side, you know. The street's like walking down a long grey tunnel and I'm halfway down this tunnel, my headache getting worse with every step, when I notice a door, yes, a door leaning against the corrugated iron. It's a simple wooden door, it's oak I think, and it's been stained and varnished and oh with its gleaming brass doorknob and its gleaming brass letterbox looks like a precious treasure. Yes precious treasure in this grey, grey street and it's as I'm walking past the door that I hear the screaming! <laughs> that caught your attention, didn't it? Well, wait. There's more. The screaming seems to be coming from behind the door. I stand motionless for a moment. Then I open the door and what do I see? Well, just corrugated iron and a few weeds and I don't hear any screaming, but when I stand in front of the door again, screaming. And it's not just one person screaming, it's lots of people, adults and children. Some of them are crying, no, shrieking, help us! And then the letterbox starts to move. Someone is trying to open the letterbox from the other side. The letterbox opens wider and wider and wider and fingers i see fingers covered with blood people are being hurt behind that door they're in pain they need help i can't just stand there and do nothing you might be able to but i cannot i will not i have empathy i pull open the door and as i do the screaming stops and i see a vast sandy shoreline Clear blue sea. I can feel the sun on my face and 
is so warm. So enticing. No, no, not enticing. Inviting. So I step through the door. I am standing on sand. I can hear the sound of, of the surf and birds. Yes, <laughs> there they are. At first, understandably, I take them for seagulls, but no, they're doves. Some of them are cooing. It's the most soothing noise. Everything about this place is soothing. I haven't felt this relaxed since before. And my niggling headache <clears throat> is gone. I look behind me and through the still open door I can see the grey street beyond. I'm already thinking of it in terms of my old world. But something I've left behind. But why shouldn't I feel like that? Who would want to return to such a world with all its... its terrible... things that can happen to anyone? No, for no reason. I mean, who would want to live there when they can live here? I wouldn't. Would you? No one would. Not anyone in their right mind. I walk along the beach. The salt water splashes at my feet and a dove flies above my head and I feel safe here. Safe and happy. I haven't felt this safe and happy since... A dinosaur! I see a dinosaur rushing towards me. And not just any dinosaur. Oh no, Tyrannosaurus Rex, the king of dinosaurs. The dinosaur walks up to the water and... Who laughed? Someone fucking laughed? What, do you think I'm making this up? Well, why would I make something like this up? Hmm? What would be the point? If I was going to make something up, I wouldn't make it so unfucking believable would I? Huh? Would I? The dinosaur, it walks up to the water. And the next thing I know, it has a dolphin in its jaws. It eats the dolphin. The dinosaur walks back along the beach and then... And then, oh, then I see a unicorn galloping towards and... Okay, hmm. enough. No, I refuse to continue in the face of your, your, what's the word? Skepticism, yes, yes, skepticism. No, I won't do it, no, no, I won't, no. Very well. If I have to say something, if you are compelling me, then I shall simply tell you what you want to hear, what you are comfortable hearing. Ready? Okay. I had a headache. I went to the chemist to get some tablets. When I got home and took the tablets, they didn't work. I was still suffering, so I cut myself here because as you know as you want to believe that's what I always do satisfied good but I did see a unicorn no 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 listen shh shut up listen I did see it I did. The unicorn galloped past the dinosaur eating the dolphin and it stopped right in front of me. It asked if I wanted a ride on its back. I said, 
Yes! Oh, yes! And the unicorn took me up and down the beach. I wanted the ride to go on forever. But after a while, the unicorn stopped and told me to get off its back. And it was while I was getting off that I staggered, you see. I was a little bit giddy from, giddy from galloping, you see. And, and somehow, I still can't work out exactly how it happened, but the unicorn's beautiful horn, it, it cut me. Here. The wound was bleeding. The unicorn told me to wash it in the ocean, but I said no. No, I needed antiseptic. I needed plasters. I needed to go back through the door. Why did I say that? Why did I feel this, this need to get away? I ran through the door. I ran as fast as I could. I ran back into the world I thought I'd left behind. I, I ran all the way home and I dressed my wound. But I keep thinking about the unicorn. I could smell him on me. I could still smell him. Oh, how I missed the unicorn. I missed him so much. I, I rushed back to the nameless street. I ran all the way there. But when I got there, the door... It, The door was gone. It was as if it had never been there at all. Now what did you say? Oh yes. Of course I've looked for it. I've, I've looked. Uh, everywhere. I'll never stop looking. <laughs>